Hi everyone, my name's Sam and welcome to another episode of a series on this channel I simply call Technology. A show where I show you anything technology related, whether it be old or new. Today we'll be taking a look at this steam engine that I created when I was 16 years old back in high school. Okay, so here we are outside. I've placed the steam engine on a table and I'll go through the process of getting it running. I have eye protection on and I also have a fire extinguisher nearby as a safety precaution. The first thing I do is remove the safety valve cap and begin filling the boiler up with water. Once it's filled to about halfway, I screw the safety valve cap back on. Next I remove the burner from underneath the boiler and remove its cap. Then I proceed to fill the burner with denatured alcohol. This is what provides the fuel source for the burner. I put the cap back on and place it back under the boiler. Now I loosen the tension screws on each side of the cylinders. This is done so that I can put a little oil down in between where the cylinders oscillate on the engine block. I also put a little oil on the pistons and on the crankshaft. I also oil parts of the gearbox, then I tighten the tension screws back up. Next I remove the burner again, light the wicks and place it back under the boiler. I take a look here as I might be able to see the flames, but it's quite difficult to see them. As you can see here, there is some moisture forming on the outside of the boiler. I'm not sure exactly why this happens. My guess is that it's condensation. If you have any ideas or know why this happens, let me know down in the comment section. Once the boiler has been running for some time, I notice some drips coming out of the exhaust. This is generally a good sign because it shows that hopefully there are no blockages. There is also some water coming out from between the cylinders and the engine block. I decided to make a couple of steam engine models in Blender 3D. To help explain how they work, these engines are based on the oscillating cylinder engine I made and they are pretty much the simplest steam engine you can build. Let's take a look at how it works. As you can see, this is a different design than the one I created. As the water inside the boiler heats up, it creates steam pressure. This pressurized steam travels along this pipe where it enters the engine block. As the cylinder oscillates, pressurized steam fills the cylinder and pushes the piston down. This causes the flywheel to rotate and because of the conservation of angular momentum in the flywheel, the steam is pushed out the exhaust. This process is repeated many times per minute depending on the rated RPM of the steam engine. Let's now take a look at the model based on the one I created. It works in a similar way to the single cylinder oscillating engine. But where the single cylinder engine has a counterweight with the conservation of angular momentum to push the exhaust steam out, this twin cylinder engine uses both cylinders to help exhaust each other's steam. So as one cylinder is filling with steam and pushing the piston back, the other cylinder is being exhausted. After some time, the boiler got up to the right temperature and the engine looked like it was about to start. But all of a sudden, the safety release valve went off and all the steam was released. So this indicates that there is a block somewhere in the pipe leading to the engine. Unfortunately, I didn't get this on camera. Anyway, I will take it into the workshop and see if I can unblock it. Okay, so I brought it into the workshop to try and solve the blockage issue. I think that the blockage is inside this pipe joiner, so I will prepare the engine to unsolder it. Hi, thank you for watching so far. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and also consider subscribing. This will help my channel grow and reach a larger audience. Making these videos is a lot harder than I thought it would be, so I really appreciate the support. Thank you. The first thing I do is remove the screw that holds the upper bracket in place. Next I hold the cylinders with my fingers so that they don't fall off when I remove the upper bracket. Then I remove the cylinders. Here you can see the steam inlet hole near the top of the cylinder. 
Now I remove the engine block screw. This is the main screw that holds the engine to the engine mount. There are two small spaces under the engine block that I forgot to remove. You will see these later on in the video. Next I get the soldering iron and heat up the solder around the pipe joiner and it comes off after some time. Now I will be able to inspect for the blockage. With the engine removed and after checking it I found that the blockage is not in the pipe joiner. So I use a thin piece of copper wire that is 1mm in diameter and I'm able to poke it through the inlet and outlet holes in the engine block. However, when I try and poke it down the inlet tube, I am not able to see the end of the wire in the inlet hole. So this tells me that the blockage is right inside the engine block. So I get some thicker copper wire and make an angled cut in the end of the wire to make a type of drilling tool and use it to remove the blockage. After giving this a try, I realize that the copper wire I'm using has an insulation layer around it. So the insulation layer is now also inside the inlet tube adding to the blockage. Lesson learned. So I remembered that I recently purchased a bunch of stainless steel push rods and these already have a nice sharp point. This particular one has a one millimeter diameter, perfect for the job. So I push the rod down the inlet tube and twist it around and grind out the blockage as well as any leftover copper wire insulation. And that was successful. I was able to use the stainless steel push rod to grind out the blockage. With the blockage found and removed, I start putting the engine back together. First I solder the pipe joiner back on. Next I screw in the engine block screw. Then I proceed to put the cylinders back on. But before I do that, here is one of the pistons. I get both the cylinders back on and screw the upper bracket back in place. Then I realized I forgot to put in the two engine block spaces. These were a last minute fix when I made the engine to tighten the o-rings that connect to the gearbox. So I push the spaces into place and tighten down the engine block again. Now the engine is completely unblocked and back together. Fingers crossed, it's ready to run. So let's take it outside and try again. So once again, I remove the safety valve cap. As you can see, I've put on a brand new stainless steel spring. I've also replaced the burner wick cotton. I refill the boiler and the burner. Then I light the burner and place it back under the boiler. Fingers crossed it will actually work this time. Like last time, there is some water coming out of the exhaust. And after some time, the steam pressure has built up. You can see it coming out from between the cylinders and the engine block. I give the flywheel a little spin and it starts right up. It's really good to see it running after so many years. There is a lot of construction going on around in my area at the moment, but hopefully we're still able to hear the sound the engine makes. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to connect the gearbox because the engine just doesn't seem to have the power to run it. I suspect the reason is that the burner is also blocked and there is not enough fuel reaching the last two cotton wicks. I think that once I get the burner sorted out and all three wicks are burning, it will provide enough steam pressure for the engine to run the machine as well. But overall, I'm really happy just to see it running again. In the future, I would like to attempt to build another steam engine. So this brings us to the end of the video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. If you want to see more content like this, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. You might also like to check out some of my other videos here and here. Thank you for watching.